Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I am now going to be answering question number three from the January 2024 Mechanics M1 paper from Edexcel um, International A Level. And this question here we have a van travels with constant acceleration. Okay, constant acceleration that should trigger in our mind the SUVA equations along a straight horizontal road. So, constant acceleration on a straight road, okay, in one direction. That means basically it is, uh, we can apply SUVA. The van passes a point A with a speed of U meters per second, and 20 seconds later passes a point B with speed of 28 meters per second. The distance AB is 400 meters, show that U equals 12. So this is like a, you know, um, Basically, you can just use SUVAP between A and B. Okay, so from A to B, we have A to B. We have S, U, V, A, and T. So S is 400 meters. U is what we have to find. V is 28 meters per second. A is something we don't know. And T is 20 seconds. Okay, so with this information, we want to find U. So we have S, U, and V, and T that we have to use. Um, and I guess we can use the, the basic formula, S equals U plus V over 2 times T. This is called, this, this formula is the, um, you know, uh, average speed times time equals the displacement which is the, it's like the area under the velocity time graph, which gives you the displacement, like the area of a trapezium. So S equals 400. So we want to find what V is, right? So S equals 400. Uh, we want to find what U is, sorry. Okay, we know what V is. V is 28. So S equals 400. We have U plus 28 over 2 times 20. So we can get rid of the 20, divide both sides by, by 20, we're going to have 400 divided by 20, which is 40 divided by 2, which is 20, equals u plus 28 over 2. We can get rid of the 2 by multiplying both sides by 20, by 2, sorry. We have 40 equals u plus 28. Therefore, u is going to be 40 minus 28, which is 12, um, as we had to show. All right, so there's the answer to part A. Very simple. Then it says, find the time taken for the van to travel from A to the midpoint of AB. So now I think a little diagram will be useful. So let's um, make a line to represent A to A. This is from A to B. This is from A, this is B, and this is the midpoint of AB. Okay, so this thing is going with constant acceleration. So the acceleration is the same all the way through from the beginning to the end. We know that at A, it's going at 12 meters per second. At B, it's going at 28 meters per second. Um, we know that this, this is time equals zero, and this is time equals 20 seconds. Um, we know that the distance is 400 all the way across. Distance all the way across is 400. And the distance from A to M is half the distance. Okay, so we know that this is 200 meters. And this is 400 meters, total distance. Midpoint, so half the distance. All right, so we want to find the time it takes for, for, for it to travel until it reaches M. Okay, so that's what we need to find. Now, let's consider A to M first and see if we need anything from to find anything from some elsewhere. So we know um, from A to M, we have the following information. S, S is 12, oh, sorry. S is displacement, which is 200 meters. Okay, S is 200, U is 12, V, we don't know V at A, but we are at M, the midpoint. We know V at B, but not, at, not there. So we don't know the velocity at M. A, we don't know the, the acceleration, okay, but we know it's constant. And T, we don't know the time either. Okay, now from these, we can find what A is by looking, considering from A to B. Because from A to B, we have S, U, V, A, T. We have S is 400. 
we have u is 12, we have v is 28, a we don't know, and t is 20 seconds. So the easiest formula to use for finding a here would be v equals u plus a t. So we have 28 equals u, which is 12, plus a, which is going to be what we have to find, times t, which is 20. Okay, so you're going to have 28 minus 12, which is 16, equals 20a. So a is going to be 16 over 20, which is 0 0.8 meters per second squared. So now we know this is acceleration because it's constant all the way through. So this is going to be 0 0.8 now. So we can find the velocity of, or we can find the time. That's what we're looking for, the time. Now we can find the time because we have enough information I think we can use here. Which formula? We can use um, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay, we could use that um, to find the time. So we have S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So S is 200. U is 12. And a half times um, that's a half times 0 0.8 times t squared. So we got um, basically 200 equals 12 t plus 0 0.4 t squared. Okay, so we want to solve this. Let's let's rewrite this in uh, as you know, like as a proper quadratic. We have 0 0.4 t squared plus 12t minus 200 equals 0. Okay, so if we divide everything by 0 0.4, that will be t squared, and 12 divided by 0 0.4 is going to give you what? So 12 divided by 0 0.4, what does that give you? 30, so t squared plus 30t minus, and 200 divided by? 0 0.4 gives you 50 equals, is that right? 200 divided by, oh, there's something wrong with that. I knew there was something wrong with that. Doesn't sound right. Divided by 0 0.4 is going to be something bigger than 200. It's going to give you 500. 500 equals 0. So we end up with t squared plus 30t minus 500 equals 0. Can we factorize this? Can we factorize this? Can we? I don't think we can. I don't think we can because two numbers multiplied to give you 500. They have to have different signs. They have to add to 30. I can't think of anything. Let's just solve this. We can use the formula. We can use completing the square. Let's use completing the square. T squared plus 30t equals 500. T plus 15 squared minus the square of 15, okay, which is 225 equals 500. So t plus 15 squared equals 725. So t plus 15 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 725. So t is going to be minus 15. It's going to be plus the square root of 725. That's the one that will make sense. Positive answer. So we have minus 15. Minus 15. plus the square root of 725. That gives us 11.925. 11.925. So therefore, we can say 11.9 seconds. Okay, so that's the time that it gets, it takes to reach the midpoint of AB. Okay, we're not going to consider the negative version because that will be minus 15 minus, it will be a negative time. Of course, we can't have a negative time. So 11.9 seconds is our answer. Is that rounded to, is that correctly rounded? Let me just make sure. 11.92, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. Is there a part C here? Yes, there is. It says the van has a mass of 1,200 kilograms. During its motion, the van experiences a constant resistive force of 260 newtons. Okay, so that's a resistance force, 260 newtons. Find the magnitude of the driving force exerted by the engine of the van as it travels from A to B. 
Okay, so it's going with a constant acceleration of 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so it's going to uh, have a driving force. The resultant force is the mass um, times acceleration. Okay, so we can sa say that D minus 260 is equal to the mass, which is 0 0.8. Sorry, the mass, which is, what are we talking about? The mass, which is 1,200 times acceleration, which is 0 0.8. So D is going to be 1,200 times 0 0.8. which is 960 plus 260. That's going to be equal to 960 plus 260. That gives us 1,220, 1,220 newtons. Okay, that's a driving force exerted by the engine of the van as it travels from A to B. And that's the end of the question. 1,220 newtons. I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear up here. Other questions from this, this um, topic of, I guess this topic was to do with, um, in the beginning, kinematics and here, dynamics. So I'll put playlists of kinematics and dynamics. And then you can also subscribe to my channel by clicking the link at the top. Thank you for watching and see you soon.